Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome back to the showroom. It's been a bit of a radio silence. I've actually been out of the shop for quite a long time for various reasons. Um, but today I just popped in to sort out a couple of bits um, that we've got going on in the background. And Graham came in to pick up a 981 Boxster S. Now we didn't have it long, it sold pretty quickly. And I'm not surprised, they're fantastic cars. Uh, the last one I had, you may remember, got written off by a kangaroo. Well, written off by me hitting a kangaroo at about 100 k's an hour. Missed my head by about that much. It sort of put me off convertibles. <laughs> They're fantastic cars. They're a bit more forgiving than the likes of the 996 behind me and the 997s, even some of the 991s, because you don't get that pendulum effect. The limit is really communicated to you. They're mid-engine, they rotate around you, 3.2 litre flat six. They're not the most powerful cars in the world. I mean, that was a 2018, um, 320 horsepower or something like that. Um, it's no different to a base 996, 911, uh, modified one on GT3s, putting out about 360. Um, these are a little bit lighter. So it's comparable though. It's um, they're quite forgiving to use being mid-engine, they just rotate around you, you can feel everything they're doing, they're nice and precise. Um, PDK box, I know some people like their manuals, but that PDK is so rapid and responsive. Uh, particularly if you're not a seasoned driver and you're just going out on the track for the first time or some country roads, I couldn't think of a better car. Which raises the point that uh, came up in conversation. So Graham saw the simulator behind me. And he took his car out there, uh, Boxster S, around one Rue racetrack, which is the local racetrack around here. And eventually, after 10, 15 minutes, his times kind of got better. So he wanted to know what is it like jumping from a simulator to the same car, same racetrack in the real world. So I figured the only way to figure it out is try it. We're going to take the McLaren 650S out on the simulator. We'll take the McLaren 650S out on the racetrack. And then we'll just compare notes on the two occasions. So let's have a look. Okay. So I'm in the McLaren 650S. It looks pretty realistic. Uh, the dash looks spot on, the wiper. Feels like home. Uh, as I mentioned, one of the boys got a little bit rowdy and broke the flat paddles. So I'm going to be using the sequential shift today, which, getting the excuse in earlier, if I'm nice and slow here, it's because I'm using this sequential shifter. So, yeah, let's go on a quick sighting lap. Let's have a look at the track, see how it compares to my memory of the track. Uh, last time I was here, I was in an R35 
I don't like messing with the settings of the game. So we're good to go and we're heading out of the pits now. It all it all feels a lot more real compared to the simulator. Just check there's no one coming. And it feels a lot more open, uh, true to life. Corner one is quite gradual and a sort of pretty sedate pace. We come up to the S bends and I feel these are a little bit less jerky than they are in the game. I, I feel like I can fit a little bit better of a flow. The elevation feels the same, and so do those exit points coming through. Now we're heading down into that really late breaking corner, so we're going to see how we can break the late turn in nice and smooth feels a lot better with a little bit more feedback in the sim and now we're hitting that blind press they did a good job of replicating this in the game and I'm just gonna squeeze those brakes a little bit here turn in it all everything happens a little bit more immediately than in the game so let's try and get the pace up here we've got, we've got about two more laps and I, it out a little bit closer this time. Let's see if I can set myself up nice for that straight and then fire through here. See here feels very unsettled in the game. It feels so much more composed coming through here than I could on the game. And you can pick up a much nicer flow, but I think that those lateral G's really help you feel it all a little bit more. And I suspect that people can go faster on the game if they haven't driven. God, this thing is quick. Absolutely rocketing along, still nice and cool, temperatures are good. 
feels like there's heat in the tyres. Squirm on the brakes real late. And glided through here. Oh, this is amazing. Right, hard on the brakes again. Let's see if we can take it out a little bit wide. Oh, I've come very close there. Through the S's through here. If uh, this car, it feels so smooth, so responsive. It just does whatever you ask. There's, it's it's amazing. The oodles of grip that I have here. There's nothing like on the game where I was losing traction. Pump on those brakes late. They delaminate your face. The carbon ceramics. I can tuck it in here. It feels so balanced and so composed. Right. Got a good feel for it. Let's have a flying lap now and let's see how we go. So quick through the strap. Picks up pace like nothing else. But again, on this corner that I hate, it is so composed, it's so flat so responsive you just feel like you can push and push and then squirm on the brakes nice and late and tuck it in here and on it on it blast out of here this is feeling good the coast is clear ahead I can power down here get to the left Squirm on those brakes, these ceramics are fantastic. Oh my god, this is such a good car. This is fantastic. The power through the straight. Oh. We were blown away. I was knocking out 59, I started at 63 down to 59 then 58 and arrived in the 55 seconds mark so I actually beat my simulator time by some oh can't even think four seconds um, overall so yeah you've got to argue that it is uh, very comparative you can come and get some good practice on a sim but the real star is the car. If you're asking me, can you replace the real deal by a simulator? <laughs> the answer's just gotta be no. It's fantastic, but you don't get the smell. You don't get the sense of speed. Oh, you don't get the complete appreciation for the mechanical symphony that you get. Taking a car like this on a track day, it's been, absolutely fantastic day and yeah I've just this car coming in at 1300 kilos 600 to 700 horsepower um, it just the GTR 700 horsepower but it's not this it's not as quick the brakes don't bite as much it's not as composed it doesn't give you that ultimate engagement and sense of control that I felt here today it's just, it's a phenomenal car. I could go on and on. Whew. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, 57 seconds in the sim world and 55.8 in the real world. Call it 56. That's pretty damn close. A second apart. Uh, first time on that track on that car on that sim and first time in that car on the track in the real world uh, times were pretty close I think if I gave it some more seat time here uh, I'll probably be able to match my real world time so to answer the question can a sim replace the real thing not really but it comes pretty damn close but to answer the question can a sim help you be a better driver in the real world with the right setup and the right game and the right apps i believe so i was playing a seto corsa 
Uh, there's always these debates about what the best sim is, but I find that it's um, easily modified. There's new render packs and shading packs to make it look more realistic. There's custom cars that feel more like their real world counterparts. And when added to a good sim setup, it's surprisingly realistic. And I did find myself referencing in my head when I was on the real track what I'd learned on the sim and on the sim referencing what I'd learned on the track so it might not be as crazy an idea as you think <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed thanks for watching check it out next time